Well, Brendan, congrats on the movie Paddington 2. I loved awesome. it like I do nearly all your movies. Um, but this one's a bit different because obviously it's for all the family. It's great fun. Were you in like a, a heartfelt move, mood when you signed on to this one? Or did you want to do a family film? Because you do films that are so different. You bounce from genre to genre. Well, I wanted to do, do something uh, about cookery. <laughs> that, that was my main motivation. I wanted to see how I'd just get on within the kitchen context. <laughs> Um, not that well. Yeah. Well, I, I was wondering, are you a... Because obviously you play the prison chef in the film, so are, are you good? Do you ever cook at all at home? Or do you... No, do you venture into that territory in the no, house? No, I lose my temper. Of course. No, it's not great. Like, it's not great asking people over and being really concerned about getting the food right and then losing your temper about everything not being hot at the same time and then going out looking like nothing, uh, something like a bat out of hell. When the people are just coming in to say hello and have a bite to eat. It's not great. <laughs> it's not. It just isn't. No. <laughs> have no patience. Would you be, uh, for me, because obviously uh, with Paddington, it's the mar- marmalade sandwich and that's the revelation. Oh, marmalade sandwiches I can do now. Do you? Because I was yeah. going to say, do you like a crisp sandwich? Because being Irish, do you know what I mean? I kind of watch it and I was going to go, I think I'd prefer like a potato sandwich. Yeah, but it kind of like, feels like full forbidden fruit, doesn't it? Crisp sandwiches. <laughs> like it feels as if you're going to explode with sort of a cholesterol bomb or something. Yeah. But yeah, of course I like crisp sandwiches. <laughs> Fantastic. You're talking to obviously a CGI bear. So <clears throat> all these movies with CGI characters, do you, is there anybody, for this one, is there somebody there with balls all over them? Is there nobody there? How, how do they work it? I'm not telling this? you, it's magic. Ah, stop. Yeah. But sure, you will get it behind There's the scenes. There's loads of different ways on this one to do it. There's yeah. different setups. It depends on who's and what's and shot and stuff like that. But the bear is always there. Okay. So. When you're doing a lighter movie like this, then is it a more laid back approach? Is it a funner set? Do you know what I mean? Can you kind of have a bit of a laugh? Uh, it's actually... Uh, it's quite hard work in the sense that there are a lot of takes necessary technically you have to keep doing it and then you have to keep the energy up and then you have to kind of maintain the sense of mayhem through a lot of takes which is kind of you know it's a bit painstaking more painstaking than it might be in different setups okay Uh, but for all that it is really good fun I mean, there's no question about it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun to watch too, of course. I mean, this movie like that, I'm sure it'll become like a Christmas classic. And I'm thinking we're coming up to Christmas. I know it's a bit, a bit away, but we're coming up to it. Do you, do you, are you into cause what, like normal people watching the classic movies that come on the telly every year? Or do you watch the box over Christmas? I do, but I watch, I tend to watch uh, screeners. I get screeners for uh, the awards okay. and stuff. And I tend to, um, that's the time I get to watch a lot of stuff that I don't get to see during the year. Um, and I kind of feel it's it's kind of you know there's a certain duty about doing that. You have to really if you're gonna if you're gonna be voting for these things. Yeah. And at the same time, it's a great opportunity just to see what you really should be seeing during the year anyway. So it's it's a good opportunity, but that's what happens. So uh, in terms of ordinary Christmas movies and things like that, yeah, if it's on, I'll watch it. But uh, that's usually the focus on the Christmas is trying to catch up with all the stuff that I missed during the year. Okay, and you've just made, I've been asking you for years, will you ever go behind the camera? And you've gone behind the counter, camera and done a short with uh, two of your sons are in it, I think. Um, how, how, why did you decide to finally, to do a project behind the camera? Um, a couple of reasons. Um, I, I kind of wanted to do it Swim Two Birds for a long time and then it didn't happen. So I said, I better, if it does happen ever, or if something else happens that I would be into doing, um, I better test the water and see if I can actually manage it or not. Okay. And I wanted to work, I wanted to see, uh, I asked Rory could he just write something for the three of us and he did one previously and then he did another one. And it just, it, I wouldn't have thought of doing a film about it. Um, so that was a challenge of itself but I could see there was something in it. In it, and yeah. like, So that was kind of the way it started off and it was just an opportunity to work with the lads. Like they're all, all four of them are involved in it. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was good to do that and then just to try and you know, just to make sure, I kind of it, it puts an added responsibility uh, on their old fella to <laughs> actually come up with the goods a little bit. So I'm in the edit now, as like okay. squeaky bum time. But I kind of did like the process of it. I didn't know if I would or not, and it was kind of a way of answering that question for myself as much as anybody else. To say, look, is it something that is just gonna, you know, that you, you know you have a panic attack? Yeah. Or and I quite I did quite enjoy kind of feeling that I was able to tell a story from behind the camera it was interesting okay and and obviously directing yeah your, your sons was that any different to being at home because you're just bossing them around in a way right <laughs> being your kids you mean being bossed around well you're well, you're the director so surely you get to boss them around but is that any being their dad did you ever get no, bossed I don't around think, i think you know nothing about being a parent 
<laughs> Maybe at I some don't. level it moves into where you get bossed around full stop. Oh, I see. Yeah. They buy, okay, they're the real boss today. Yeah, sometimes they let you think that you're bossing them around the odd time, but that's just when they're being sly and underhand. Okay. And then they come back at you and they just boss you around. That's what happens. <laughs> Fair enough. So would you would you do it again then after doing that? <laughs> after the, wait, wait, would you do it without family next time? As oh, <laughs> I do it without a camera next time. No, I was. I'm only messing. It was great. I had a great time with them, and uh, you know there were people. There were people where there were times when you'd be kind of crossing the line a little bit and having a little bit of a pop where people would be taking up positions. But that's only natural, and it should only it should happen uh, on any in any sort of an enterprise where people kind of have thoughts and convictions about what they should do and kind of fight their corner and then you move on. But there was a really sort of creative atmosphere on set, which I was really pleased about. We got a great bunch of people together. The crew was great. And yeah, um, yeah I had a really good time. I really did enjoy it now. OK, well, you obviously, last time you work with so many different people, whether they're famous or not. Do you still learn from other actors when you work with them or directors? Or is there a point where you kind of, you're Brendan, do you know what I mean? You've, you've done it all, like you can't learn anymore. No, no, I mean, it's, unless you're learning, you're not you know you're going backwards basically you know unless you're learning and it's good I mean you do learn a lot as you go and if you're open to it I suppose and then you you know you refine things and you test things down you can you don't try not to make the same mistakes and all that kind of stuff but it's always good like like with something like knuckles <laughs> to just throw all that stuff out of the out of the pram altogether and just say right I'm just going for this now yeah. and like hopefully you get somebody like Paul King who will kind of have your back and you kind of feel no it's not he's not going to leave you with egg in your face particularly you just go at it and that's always kind of refreshing so you will always i mean i certainly learned something from doing that there are a lot of a lot of the setups you kind of say oh i didn't think it would work like that but it's working great like that so you're always learning yeah okay brilliant well listen congratulations on the movie and um yeah talk to you again soon cheers thanks, John. cheers cheers that's brilliant thanks fm 104 dublin's hit music station